Yeah, so make sure your body is comfortable. Feel free to change position, just to ensure you're not torturing your body. And also throughout this little meditation and throughout our work here, I will ring a bell from time to time like that. This bell is, uh, besides the fact that it's nice, it's like a secret code between us. Whenever you hear the bell, it's almost, it says, hey, be here now, be present. Come back to the here and now. So if you somehow find yourself thinking about things or lost in the past or the future and hear the bell, have that as an alarm clock to come back to what is real, what is here and not, the moment, the present. We can start by watching the breath. The body is breathing by itself. The universe is breathing us. And simply watching the movement of the air, the sensations connected with the breathing process. Using that for a little bit, focusing on the breath, ignoring anything else. And whenever you catch yourself in some daydreaming and drop the thought and come back to breathing awareness again and again. We are not trying to stop thoughts. It's not possible to stop thoughts, to control them. The very attempt to stop thoughts creates more tension. So if the mind is busy, random stuff, just notice it and don't get involved. As if the thoughts which are like images or inner voices, you know, like a bird in the sky chirping, you hear it. Being the witness of this random thoughts coming and going, coming back to the breath. So relax your jaw, relax your eyelids, eyeballs. Instead of doing anything, being busy, thinking, doing, planning, allowing ourselves to just be. It's natural for some of us, if it seems like the mind is even more busy and it's just crazy, it's natural. 
the best to watch thoughts coming back to the here and now aware space. Don't become a taxi. A wise man once said in connection to right here in San Francisco and pedestrians, they whistle and the taxi stops. Just like that, we tend to be taken with each thought. Some thought comes past the future and we are going along with it, living the present moment that is becoming a taxi. Okay, we can switch gears now and let go of the breath. Turn your awareness towards the experience of hearing. like a cat, like a hunter. Just pay attention to sounds. Without labeling them. As if you were some alien that got into your body and is hearing for the first time. Listen sounds from outside from this room, the sound of the body makes. Using the sound as an anchor into the present. Notice the tendency to check out in some thinkingness. The more you turn to watch your mind, the more you'll be horrified how absent we are. But it's it's good. Whenever you catch yourself, you've been hijacked. As soon as you realize, drop that thought, what's the point? Come back to the present here. You don't need to make a lot of effort. It's more like chilling on the beach, just hearing. Relaxing into the now. Taking a little vacation from planning, rehashing, doing, thinking. Of 
turn your interest now, your awareness, we'll switch gears again. Turn your awareness towards the experience of your body. But not the body as a concept or the body as a, you know, a image in the mirror. But our actual experience in this moment with the eyes closed. The ears closed. Experience of the body is just some sensations, some contractions, flows of energy, free floating in this open, empty space. Simply noticing these energies, these sensations, without trying to analyze them or labeling them, without trying to change them or get rid of them in any way. Allowing everything to be as it is. Whenever you catch yourself, you have been lost in daydreaming. Come back to the here and now. They say in these teachings that a lot of our busy mind actually comes out of feelings we don't want to feel, or various things in the body. Now as we are bringing awareness to the experience of the body, within the body there are two types of sensations. There are these functional sensations, like the contact with the chair, or the air on the skin, or any, uh, whatever, some headache, or yeah, these functional bodily sensations. And there's also another thing which we call emotions, which are usually happening from the neck to the belt, this area, the frontal line, the throat, the chest, solar plexus, the gut. That's where we have our emotional body, our energy body, our feelings. But most of us, we haven't been taught to pay attention to. If somebody asks us how we feel, we are telling, we're telling some story. Even these words like anxiety, stress, overwhelm, sadness. They are actually referring to some actual sensation in the body. So take a moment to really notice and fully allow whatever you got without trying to analyze it or without trying to 
get rid of it, calm it. Simply witnessing these energies. Notice how the tendency is to bounce back up in the mind in some story, the past, the future. Just this habit. So I work with people and they share that, oh, I'm sad. I feel the sadness or this stress. Here's the next question is where? Where do you feel this? Then we are like turning inwards and noticing this somatic content, this energy content in the body. So, so far, I have taken us in a more like pedagogical, little uh, organized trip in three sectors of our experience. First, the realm of the mind, where we have thoughts and images. Then, the experience of external sense perceptions, like the world appearing as sounds with the eyes closed, and then the realm of the body, the sensations, feelings. But in reality, all of this happen all at once. Sounds, perceptions, energies in the body, thoughts, coming and going, ever changing. So try now to be present to the totality of the now. Welcoming these three realms, thoughts, sensation and sounds. Being present to our experiencing. Doing the best you can to not escape into the past or the future. That's impossible, basically. So whenever you catch yourself checked out, drop the thought, come back to the here and now. Zen master once said, it's the state of being where we don't stick to anything. That's the aim of our practice. Feelings come, we are aware of them. We are not sucked fully into them, don't stick. Thoughts come and go, we watch them. It's interesting to know that we are naturally doing that with sounds. Sounds come and go, we don't stick to them, 
don't take them personally. If we were to do the same with our thoughts and feelings, we would be a Zen master already. So what we are doing now, our practicing is so-called mindfulness, or being present, witnessing our experience. Which, without this, it's very hard to go any further. So I encourage us all, even when we are going to open the eyes and interact, to, to not drop this and to remain in this, let's say, effort of, of resting in the now, watching our reactions, watching our thoughts throughout the circle, not just in meditation. When people are speaking with the judgments, or we may feel something, remaining aware, being present to our experiencing, being the witness. Now, what is important to verify is that all of this data, images, sounds, thoughts, feelings, they're ever-changing, impermanent, coming and going, never the same. No thought stayed with us all our life. No feeling. So that's what Buddha called the impermanence. However, what's also important to realize, very important to realize that there is something else here besides thoughts, feelings, and sounds. There is that, whatever it is, no matter how we call it, that which is aware. Call it presence or consciousness or awareness, witnessing, it's all labels. which are pointing to something real, which is hearing these words right now, and is aware of the thoughts and feelings, yet unaffected, untouched, and ever present. Even if we are not aware of it, it's still here. That which is aware of this voice now, the same reality was aware of the first taste of ice cream or a few or a baby. This presence is always on. Even in night sleep, it's it's aware of dreams. Yeah, so take a moment to, to tune into, to notice this sense of being, the sense of fact of being aware. The difficulty with this is that we are trying to be aware of this presence, 
in the same way as we are aware of a computer or of a cloud or of a sensation. We are trying to pinpoint it, locate it. But it doesn't work like that. Because this presence is invisible, formless. It's like the invisible man. So we can't pinpoint it. However, we, we are it. It's that which perceives all the time. We have better chance to notice this presence if we are not focusing attention. We open the attention. Notice this sense of aware silence. In Buddhism and in many traditions, they talk about taking refuge in awareness, taking refuge in presence. And we can probably experience right now that although nothing changed, there's more sense of peace. It's a refuge because this, which is hearing these words right now, it's stable, it doesn't change, it's unaffected by anything. And that is why it's a refuge. There's some sense of inner causeless peace and okayness. So in some traditions, they call this self-remembering or self-abiding, which is being present here, aware of thoughts, feelings, sensation. We are also aware of our own being, aware of being aware. It's not dependent on having the eyes closed. It's easier to tune into this presence, the eyes closed and stopping any activity like in formal meditation, but gradually it's less compartmentalized. So we are, as we drive, as we talk to people or listen or work, we are remembering to be present, to come back to the sense of being. That's the trajectory. <laughs> 